Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of the South Central Louisiana State Mud Dogs Dynasty and here we are a tour it's conference championship week I was gonna show you Texas State the Texas State game but what happened was my game file for that game actually got corrupted which was a true shame because even though we didn't win that game that was senior day for us and really wanted to honor the seniors of this team with not only a win but get the proper recognition that they deserved here on this channel we did end up losing to texas state 31 to 20 it was a close game for us which was actually leading at the half but kind of let it go in the second half uh, part of the reason was losing that turnover battle with two second half interceptions which you know that's that's always tough to see what the very last game of the season at least in the regular season we don't know if we made a bowl game or not g Ganell struggled on the day 10 for 28 138 yards a couple of touchdowns but he also threw a couple of interceptions uh casey bug though he showed out with 21 carries 130 yards and averaging 6.1 yards a carry which you know is definitely solid and then the senior tj jennings we elevated him up to make sure he gets some extra playing time for potentially his his very last game at the mud bog he's gonna get a few catches for uh for the bowl games though uh see the bowl game projections um going into this week um looking to see if south central louisiana state is in here it, it looks like we're not but you know definitely some things could change uh going into the week but you know we'll definitely see what happens when we move on the next week all right, so Dante Fagan from Ohio State is going to win the Heisman Trophy. And doing it effectively, too, is he had almost 500 first place votes and nearly 2,000 votes total. It looks like we aren't going to be going to a bowl game, so this is going to be the end of the season. But, you know, we'll take a look at some other teams in our conference as well as some notable non conference teams that we played this season, see what's happened to them. All right, so. What we have here so it looks like for the new orleans bowl western kentucky who are uh, considered the champs in the sun belt they're going to be playing the new orleans bowl maryland is going to go to the poinsettia bowl uh maryland is a team that of course we played for our fbs debut game we lost to them 45 to 35 to see you anything else that's really notable to us on oh, barrel usc that'll be a good game let's see what do we have here scrolling down i thought oh uh ecu is going to be playing in the liberty bowl against lsu that'll be an interesting game nice season for east carolina by the way they uh they blew us out of the water when we visited their stadium about midway through the season but it was their blowout that really got our team going again and then towards the end you know we're gonna have ul lafayette in the godaddy.com bowl our bourbon bowl rivals who we did beat you know they get to go to a bowl game but we don't then ohio state and alabama national championship do have eight uh all conference players and then henry klein the uh, the head ball coach you know nothing too crazy six and six the first season not too bad also get to keep our offensive coordinator as Maurice Mason actually signs an extension with us for five seasons. Maurice Mason in top third for points per game. Really a big reason why we got that. As for our graduating seniors, always the saddest part of this of any college football series, you know, seeing some guys that a pivotal part of our football team leave. Rashawn Henderson was a heck of a tackle for us and also had some surprisingly soft hands as well. Rashawn Hardy also, you know, with some nice punts. Terry was that blindside tackle. Scott Miles uh, was a premier receiver for us, was kind of a four spacer, um, if you can say. 33 receptions for three touchdowns, over 500 yards. Definitely had some speed to burn. John Nixon, uh, third string quarterback of this team, wanted to get him in the game, but you know simply did not work out that way uh, for for the senior day. Really tried to get him in there, and uh, you know, we almost did. Uh, if we had a few more seconds, we would have had a handoff. T.J. Jennings uh, with four catches, with three of them coming in the final game of the season. So it was nice that we were able to utilize him a little bit more before he graduated. You know, since you know he put in this work and uh overseeing the transition of this team into the fbs 
First transfer I want to talk about is Shad Gifford, who you can see in the background just laying it down on the halfback. Shad Gifford is going to be a strong safety for us, hailing out of Gainesville, Florida. You know, he has a lot of height, you know, a good amount of weight for the safe position, coming in at 6'5", 208 pounds. Was at Mississippi State his freshman year and was contributor for that squad, but at the end of the day, he did get a little homesick and, you know, wanted to go to a program uh, when he was thinking about where he wanted to transfer to that is trying to build something instead of trying to maintain a tradition and saw that South Central Louisiana State is going to just completed their first full season in the FBS. So we're really excited to be able to get him. He uh, did not uh, get the hardship waiver that, that we wanted, so he is going to have to sit out for a season. But we're still extremely excited to be able to bring him onto our football team because he's going to make our defense so much better on the back end. Another major transfer that I want to talk about is Tyree Pickens. Pickens is a cornerback that hails from Carroll City, Florida, uh, one of those really tough communities where either you make it out big or you stay stuck in that community. But you know, this this kid has a lot of talent. His uh, freshman year was he uh, was at Michigan State, where he fielded uh, kick returns as well as punt returns, as well as was a really solid dime corner for this team. So kid definitely has a lot of talent, but he does come with a little bit of baggage as he um he did get dismissed from the team uh, about halfway through his freshman season so really had to spend a year at the juco in order to prove that he has the maturity to handle division one college football then when he got to his juco stop uh near his hometown actually he definitely showed out showed that he can play not only the cornerback position but also is able to play on the offensive end when called upon is a nice two uh, not two side but like multiple sides of the ball kind of athlete has some really soft hands which really helps him on the defensive end to make some really nice interceptions like i said the kid has a lot of talent since uh, he's coming in from the JUCO ranks, we get to see him next season, and he's going to be our best quarterback right away. And I'm really excited to have him because this kid has a lot of instincts, plays with a lot of heart, and he's going to give our defense a lot of emotion. I'm playing alongside Bobby Boucher as well as Bruce Terrell. Real, really excited to have this kid. If you... If you like uh, Road to Glory series, uh, definitely check out both of these channels, or not both of these channels, but both of these Road to Glory series down in the description. want to give a shout out for Crates Games for allowing me to bring in two of these wonderful young athletes onto the South Central Louisiana State football team. I definitely encourage you guys to check it out in the description below. Moving on to the recruiting aspects of the first offseason for the South Central Louisiana State Mud Dogs do have a few guys that I want to go after. Thanks to the few transfers, we are down to, I believe, seven scholarships. So, have a lot of discretion in what players that we can go after. And there's definitely some players that we're going after. There's Bo Avery, T Tim Smith, Brian Weeks, Ryan Brandt, JP Walker. A lot of dudes that are extremely talented, but there's three that I really have my eye on. The first of which is Tim Smith, really nice athlete from Washington. I really think he'll be a good fit for a football program. So thinking we might put some points in him. Bo Avery as well, I think would be extremely helpful for, for our team as well. But I'm going to try to figure out how I want to break these points down so i'll come back to you guys when i have all my points distributed all right so there's a few athletes that i wanted to go after tim smith bo avery and brian weeks are the big three that i really wanted and then there's another athlete that i wanted to go for and martin quinn just having those athletes on the roster would definitely help us out going forward hopefully when signing day comes around we get all four of the players I really want as well as maybe a couple of her of uh, compliment pieces. Alright, so here we are at signing day and we do get Tim Smith, but Bo Avery and Brian Weeks are going to go to University of Miami in Ohio. And then Jaguise Jones, I don't know where Jaguise Jones is heading up. Maybe we didn't put enough points in him or 
or something but he's not gonna be coming with us as well so tim smith is the only person that we're gonna get however we do get the top recruiting class in the Sun Belt, which is definitely a really nice sign going forward we'll definitely have to check out how uh signing day went down all right so here we are at signing day and jacques jones who we put points into did not go anywhere but bo avery went to miami of ohio and we lost him big martin quinn if we uh, put any points into martin quinn we would have gotten him but we didn't and ohio state is gonna snatch him up from us uh, greg monroe and adam fours are gonna go to different places brian weeks we only lost uh by a thousand points to brian weeks randy cruz uh another defensive line is gonna come with us and we do get tim smith as well really hurts that we lost uh bo avery is that's a dude that could definitely help us out but looking up and down this recruiting list really really happy about the recruiting class that we brought in overall really solid so squad and we'll see how it stacks up to rest of the country so here we are with the, the top classes for this season and we are coming in with the 58th ranked recruiting class i think you know they may not be high caliber players at least most of them with the exception of tim smith but i think this is a team recruiting class that's going to be a lot better than 58 when looking back three to four years from now and i'm just trying to see where the other recruiting classes from the Sun Belt are and just scrolling down and i didn't believe my my uh, my eyes i had to scroll all the way down to 82 to find a number another Sun Belt team and you know that was from ul monroe so since i re <laughs> and you can see it right now on the screen i didn't believe it so i scrolled all the way back up you know to find uh, you know your south central louisiana state team and then i scrolled all the way down a little bit more carefully to make sure that you know i saw everything care uh right and sure enough you know ul monroe all right so here we are at the uh, position changes uh first thing uh that i want to do is uh take care of tim smith Tim Smith uh, seems like a offensive weapon for us, uh, although he could play defense if we absolutely had to, but we prefer him not to. I think we're going to put him at wide receiver, though, uh, since we already have a nice running back in Casey Bugs. So Tim Smith's going to be our number one receiver, and Ryan Wilson might be our number two wideout, depending on how the training results go for the upperclassmen that are on this football team. Would be a nice little duo to have either way and i think we'll have an improved receiving core from what we had from the previous season stan castillo of course uh he is going to be coming in as our assumed starter of og Ganell, depending on how he progresses might force a a quarterback battle in spring camp as well as well as a few other quarterbacks that we have on this roster behind Ganell. uh definitely not the best uh, quarterback room another thing that i want to do Bobby Boucher, think we're gonna move him over to the middle linebacker spot. I thought we didn't utilize him enough in certain packages. So we're gonna move him to the middle linebacker. Then we're gonna move Lyle, who was a solid player, by the way. We're gonna move him to the right outside linebacker position. That way we should be able to see Bobby Boucher on the field more often. And then figure out what else I wanna do here. See, uh, we have, we'll have a true freshman starting, but I think I'm gonna move I think we're going to move Dan Fine to the left linebacker position. And then I'm going to move Patrick Williams to right outside linebacker. So that he'll uh, sit behind Lyle for, for his season before he moves into a starting role next season. And then Casey Gibbs, I'll just keep him at middle linebacker. There's always a possibility that Bobby Boucher could declare for the NFL since he is a 99 overall already. Hopefully we don't lose him that early. But, you know, we'll see what happens. At corner, you know, Joe Thompson's going to be our number one corner right now. Uh, Tyree Pickens is not on the roster as of yet. He hasn't came into campus quite yet, but he should be on the roster when we start our games this fall. Again, you know, really excited to have Tyree Pickens on our team. And that's the same for Shad Gifford. Gifford's not 100% here yet. He's still technically on Mississippi State rosters, but he's going to come to us this fall and you know i'm really excited about that looking at this team however you know it's going to be a really young football team um just like our top 15 to 20 guys like most of them are going to be freshmen anyways here we are with training results you know um again 
kind of real excited about how where our team is at um gonna have slightly more 80 overall pluses on this team uh than, than we did last year and you know we'll just have a little bit more depth you know last year we had you know an overall 60 with a 60 rated offense and a 65 rated defense and we should have a pretty nice jump this season although i would have liked to see a little bit more improvement overall as a squad especially with our our starting players definitely need to bring in some guys that have a little bit more effort and take care of themselves a little bit better in the in the off season but you know decent training results overall as g Gannell, who was our starting quarterback last season he um he worked on his speed a little bit so he does have decent speed not as fast as uh, luis castillo who will probably be our starter coming into the season but you know we'll see what happens casey bugs and brad muse are going to be coming back in the backfield of course and darren joyce jumps up to 71 overall so not quite as high as ryan wilson but joyce will be a solid third receiver for us made some big plays for us in the in the last season especially down the stretch offensive line is particularly young as well um did bring a lot of linemen but you know we you know it's still some of that we need to work on do have a couple of solid guys and then we have a few linemen that should probably round up the the interior but you know we'll, we'll, it'll still be a work in progress but i think next season we'll, i'm really excited to see what we can do you can see the rest of the roster and you know still got to work on the depth as as a team still not a lot of talent but it, we're a little bit better on paper than what we were coming into this previous season and we were able to finish six and six so maybe this this season you know definitely going to be going for a bowl game don't know which bowl game but it's going to be a bowl game nonetheless and then finally before we go into uh looking at the schedule gonna have to cut a few fellows since we have too many people on the roster I'm gonna cut anthony mcleod and i think i'm gonna cut ben espinoza who's actually the older brother of john espinoza he's gonna get cut and then finally desmond browning i think is gonna be cut as well but this is going to be the full 70-man roster for the upcoming season. It's going to be a young team. A lot of freshmen are going to be stepping in to starting roles right away. But I'm confident that they'll be able to do just fine in their, in their first season of FBS college football. Speaking of, uh, of FBS football, here's the upcoming schedule for this season. And look at who we have at week five. We're going to have an early season matchup against Western Kentucky who did end up winning the Sun Belt this past season and we were competitive for them for about three quarters before the wheels fell off so definitely gonna have a nice opportunity to get a crack against them once again this time at our home stadium also really like the non-common schedule that, that we have assembled with two ranked matchups towards the end of the season one thing I am going to do is I'm going to move this week two matchup against Toledo and I'm going to move it up to week one so that way we can get that early early season test against uh, an out of conference opponent from the MAC. Toledo, of course, is a solid football team. And then, you know, we'll have a few home games in a row against Georgia State, Troy, West Kentucky. And then we'll have a long road stint. Uh, going on the road against uh, Lafayette for the Bourbon Bowl, Arkansas State, Texas State, UL Monroe. And then our last home, actually, we have two more home games, you know, South Alabama and Old Dominion. Dominion, I mean, Old Dominion will be our senior day. And then we'll have two road games in between those last two home games against, you know, Miami, Florida and Texas A&M. So real excited about the schedule, you know, got a nice sprinkle of games that we can get as that we can win and as well as a couple games that will challenge us anyways that is all i have for today if you want to see your very own recruits uh, that i'm going to try to go after um you know the build recruit template is in the description feel free to fill that out until then thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video uh make sure to leave a like as well as subscribe to the channel if you really like my content until then i will see you guys next time thanks